Hi, I'm Mark Gurdon. I'm the owner of 13 Forest Gallery, and um, I'd like to introduce you to our artist talk for our current exhibition, Panorama. Uh, normally, of course, we'd like to do this in the gallery so that uh, folks can come in and, and enjoy the work in person, but uh, we're going to try this uh, online, and um, I'm going to introduce the three artists that are in the show, Paul Beckingham, Benita LaFleur, and Lynette Haggard. Hi. Hi. So thanks for joining us today. Um, the, the question that we wanted to pose to you artists is, um, you know, the, the idea behind the show Panorama was to sort of bring together three different styles, realism, abstraction, and then something kind of in between, just to show kind of the full spectrum of painting approaches. And so we wanted to ask you why you work in the style that you work in, um, you know, what appeals to you about it, and what are the benefits to it or the challenges, just basically kind of discuss your approach to painting. Okay. Paul, do you want to start? Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll start. Um, uh, so I'm painting in realism, uh, which sometimes touches on photorealism, but not always. Uh, I think I think uh, when we when we start painting and drawing, we 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 begin with objects and uh, you know still life setups mainly, and we're sort of told to paint what we see, and I think that naturally uh, leads us towards realism. And I didn't stray from that because I I just enjoy getting the the representation. And so um, I think when you when you paint what you see and when you you know work on accurate color matching and uh, edge work and things like that, you, you end up with something that's sort of a believable rendering. And I enjoyed that, so I I didn't I didn't stray from it. I just kept going with uh, with the realism. You still have. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, but you. Um, while you're painting, you have an editing process um, because it's it's realism, but it's realism right. minus things that may be interfering to the painting, right? Yeah, yeah. There's not you don't put everything in the painting. You you need to simplify uh, and and sort of focus on your on your objective, which might be um, the, the the painting behind me. You know, there there are thirty boats are left out of that painting. Of that scene. This is a harbor full of boats, but they weren't necessary to to convey the the, the sunset and the light and the you know the, the the sort of the peace of the harbor. So there's a lot of editing going on. You you leave things out because you you don't want to fill the whole canvas with with detail and unnecessary stuff. So yeah, there is a lot of editing. Um, so, but you what remains uh, is something that I try to paint what I see. So the the colors are faithful. Um, but the composition is not. That's really interesting. Benita, do you want to speak for a couple minutes? Yes, um, I am the one that falls in the middle, and I guess that would be expressionism. Um, I like re I like to take a realistic uh, <laughs> photograph of something and then twist it and make it into something more abstract. So I enjoy taking something that looks real and twisting it and looking at the surface of the object <coughs> or the building or the scene and making it into a more abstract um, paint, a painting. So I'll often take the canvas and turn it upside down after I've finished one view and look for colors and shapes and ideas from that all at the same time trying to maintain the object that I'm started with. Is there anything what Paul said about subtracting out and adding in that so resonates oh, with the way you work also? Yeah, absolutely, because when I'm doing a barn, for example, I'll find elements in in the photograph, because usually I take a photograph of old buildings and falling down structures, and I'll find shapes that will resonate with me, and I'll leave out something. So if there happens to be a tree that doesn't fit into the, the scene, I'll remove it. And 
make a big uh, blank side of, of the building. Yeah, absolutely. Can you can you tell me about the turning it upside down? Uh, what do you what are you getting out of that? That's uh... well, it's like a third eye because <laughs> I often find I often find when I take a photograph of my painting and see it through the camera lens, I see it differently than I see it um, one on one. So turning it upside down gives me a completely different perspective of shapes and sizes of different elements of the painting and even colors that I might want to explore and stretch into different areas. Okay, thank you. Lynette, do you want to speak for a bit? Sure. Um, well, initially, when I first began painting a long time ago, uh, like Paul said, you know, originally we, we were taught to look at things and observe and build our skills and observation. And I did a lot of that when I was uh, young, person and when I got to college things changed somewhat for me over time I had a couple of instructors who were uh, very we did a lot of exercises based on simplified form and color uh, sort of looking at a lot of Matisse and uh, I, I had two art professors in particular who contrasted one another one was we had to look at it was very more about composition it wasn't about realism so much but it was about painting what you saw well however you edit it out like paul took the boats out we might be doing this gigantic still life with a model and then we'd simplify it and subtract and come up with our own work then later on i became really involved in landscape painting which i loved and loved being outdoors a lot and did a lot of that uh lived up in the appalachian mountains for a while when i was a senior in college and over time, I, I stuck with painting landscape for a pretty long time. But around 2002, I just something shifted for me. And I was very interested in simplifying shapes and form and really uh, sort of inventing my own language using composition and color and form. And uh, over the past 18 years, I've been working on it more and more, both in three-dimensional work, which I do once in a while, and painting, which is my primary form of expression. And I do also do some assemblage work out of uh, industrial cardboard material. So um, like Benita said, I, I do like to uh, turn things around, look at them upside down, look at them in a mirror. Sometimes I'll put my paintings to a mirror and you can see things that you just don't see when you're, I mean, you, you get, I get, focused on one thing and I don't see the whole picture as it were. Uh, right now I'm painting in my studio on a, on a giant piece of paper that is attached to cardboard. It's a big piece of watercolor paper and I'm painting flat. And so it's fun because the, the, the substrate is on some uh, milk crates and I walk around it. So yesterday I didn't turn it around, but I walked around it. And um, it was kind of a fun exercise because it was like, four or five paintings, depending on where I was standing. So um, the, the challenge is that uh, I think a lot of times people, uh, there, are, there are some people who just can't relate to abstraction. I, I found that there are some, a lot of people can relate to more um, imagery, the language of realism, um, and the more abstract things become, the more confused they get or, uh, you know, unclear. So it's, it's kind of interesting to observe the viewers. Some viewers are very attracted to it and some other viewers, you could see a big question mark. So it's, it's you know, everyone's different. That's the challenge. Well, one thing I thought was really, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. One thing I thought that was interesting what you said was about that you came up with your own language. and something that's a through line for the three of you is that each one of you has a very specific language. And I think that is something that we tend to look for in, the, in, our, in our gallery. I like to look at a painting and say, oh yeah, that's Lynette. Oh yeah, that's Paul, that's Benita. Like I, I, I think a signature language, if it appeals to you, it, it, um, you I, I love seeing it in, in all its different iterations. Yeah. 
sorry, it was fun for me to see Bonita and Paul's work together with my work. Uh, when I was at the gallery, it was, you know, unfortunately with this pandemic, I only saw it once, but uh, <laughs> I hope to see it again sometime soon. Uh, and I, I really, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation going on between the three bodies of work. I really thought that was uh, very, very fun for me. Because, you know, I felt like the odd person out. Sorry, go ahead. No, I enjoyed really looking at the way the paintings were hung together because the colors really res bounced off of one another in many ways. So it wasn't necessarily the subject matter, uh, but just the, the forms and the shapes kind of w really worked together the way they, they were hung. Yeah, that was a really, it, it was, I was worried that it was going to be a challenging show to hang because the work all does look so different. But once we got it together, it was really fun to see which ones looked really nice together and how they brought different elements out in each other when they were placed next to each other. And it, it was a really interesting puzzle to see, like, how can we make all of these works speak to each other when, you know, at first glance, they, they appear so different. Right. Yeah, I think with the uh, with the the tour you did, uh, that really that really showed. That Thanks. They are, they're very carefully placed. I like that. Yeah. Well, as you said, I hope you do get to see the show again. Um, it's been extended because of the pandemic. Um, it, it's a wonderful show, and it really is. A, to me, when I look at it, it's um, it's a series of uh, subtractions away from what it is that we see with our own eyes and uh, it's 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 a wonderful show to walk through slowly nice all right well thanks for chatting with us um, and you know we hope our our viewers enjoy this little video as well and thanks for tuning in thank you 13 forest Thank yes, you. thank you, 13 Forest. <laughs> thank you. Thanks.